hard to make an exciting, entertaining, action-packed review of a turn-based strategy game, but this game has some great animations, and with the addition of some festive music, the killer robots just come alive. This is Front Mission 4, and those are Bonzers. I guess they couldn't call them mechs from Mech Warrior. Maybe that was already taken. In any event, they're more or less the same thing. If there's one thing the Japanese have excelled at in the past 20 or 30 years, it's finding ways to incorporate giant robots with guns into things. They're really good at it. And fortunately in this game, we're spared any kind of plot involving teenagers with blue hair who just happened to pilot 16 billion dollar robots. Zero Six, you must be wondering why you're here. No sir, I was informed that new Durando recruits are always thrown into a Vanser before assuming their post. Yes, that's how we do things. But rest assured that this is not a test. This isn't the type of game that I talk about that often or review very much, but I really enjoy turn-based strategy games. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to try to fly a spaceship through a frantic maze of bullets. I'd rather just sit back, relax, and think about how to win a battle in whatever amount of time it takes to do it. You're not timed in this game if you want to take an hour to play a battle, you take an hour. And many times you'll find in this game, it takes an hour to win the battle. If you've played any Final Fantasy Tactics games, this will all seem very familiar to you because it's a very similar game. In fact, it's made by Square, who also made Final Fantasy Tactics. Front Mission is a very different style of game, in that you're managing a team of robots with guns and missiles rather than summoning magic. And in many ways, this game is more complex than the, than the Final Fantasy Tactics games. But it's still pretty much the same style. If you played Front Mission 3, a lot of things have improved here with Front Mission 4, and some things have gone backwards. For one thing, the plot in this game is not its strongest feature. In fact, I think Front Mission 3 was far more interesting. I also don't care for some of the voice dialogue. Most of the game is told to you through the characters' faces and text in Windows, which works quite well. And the artwork is really nice. But when they start putting on some voice dialogue, they're trying to create this multinational force, and they've really gone over the top with creating these various character accents that actually starts getting distracting after a while. That's a minor gripe though. The strength of this game is in its detailed turn-based strategy gameplay. I'll break this into a two-part review. The first part will cover the basics and the second part will look at a battle and go in depth into how to actually play the game and if it plays like a game that you'd be interested in. You have two different teams in this game. You have a European team and a South American team of characters. Throughout the game, you build their Vonzers, you earn weapon and experience, you can make them more powerful, buy bigger guns, backpacks, and all that stuff is really cool and in-depth. We're looking at some of the giant Vonzers here. You can equip them with machine guns, shotguns, long-distance rifles, rockets, missiles. They have all different kinds of backpacks in this game, and much of this stuff has been improved over Front Mission 3. For instance, they have backpacks that emit electromagnetic pulses. They have sensor backpacks, so you can send your, your guy way off in the distance and then launch missiles that'll land near him at enemies. There's a repair backpack, so I always have a character that does nothing but run around and repair people when their limbs get blown off. I played through the entire game about two years ago, back before I started uh, doing the classic game room reviews again. I had more time to spend with one game. My save game file says that I played for 53 hours, which seems about correct. Now that took me several months because this is a great game to pick up. Last thing in the day, play for a half hour to an hour. It's not a game that tests your reflexes. It's a thinking game. You 
go into each battle, which is a turn-based battle on that grid-like map. You make decisions going into the battle how to equip your robots and team members. When you attack somebody, or if you're on defense, or when anything happens, the game plays out those actions through these animation screens. You can skip past these, you can make them faster, but they're oftentimes fun to watch and they show you how many rounds hit the enemy, and it's always very gratifying to see your characters blow the hell out of enemy robots and uh, just see them explode into flames. And to be honest, I definitely feel like I got my money's worth from the gameplay, but I was so disappointed with the plot by the end of it there's not much I can give away necessarily about the plot because it more or less unravels by the time you're done with the game and most of it is nothing you haven't seen in several dozen movies before anyway. But you have these two different teams and you'd eventually figure that they'd come together into one giant team and you'd have this huge battle at the end of the game which is what I was waiting for and it never happens. But that's not why you buy this game. You buy this game so that you can control an army of 10-story tall giant robots with impossibly large automatic weapons and missiles that blow the hell out of each other and everything in the surrounding area. And the strategy part of this game is really nice. How do you outfit your robots? What kind of guns do you give them? What kind of armor? This stuff is so incredibly complex that it's difficult to explain in a review in just a few minutes. But I love the different features that you can build onto your robots and the different weapons and how they, and how they actually uh, work in the battlefield. The game starts you off with a number of tutorials, so if you've never played a game like this before, I think it does a nice job of easing you into it. You learn all these techniques throughout the game because it is actually very challenging and the enemy AI is not stupid. Many times I found myself thinking a mission would be a cakewalk. I'd get all my my robots out there and attack the enemy and then find out I was completely destroyed because they had a bunch of missile launchers somewhere. I wasn't expecting it. And you load up your save game file and try it again. And it's an enjoyable experience if you like this kind of game. Graphically, you can see on screen it looks nice. I think the the uh, displays they pop up are easy to navigate, easy to understand once you get into the game. I wish the story had been a bit more interesting and there was a bit more character depth, but... Uh, perhaps they changed that in Front Mission 5, which was released in Japan. We did not get that one in the United States. Now the good news is that Classic Game Room has a copy of Front Mission 5 for my PlayStation 2 that's a Japanese model, and in fact I'm playing that right now. Well, not right now. Right now I'm recording the narration for Front Mission 4. But I'm pecking away at Front Mission 5 for about a half hour to an hour every now and then. Which is what I like to do with these strategy games. What we're seeing on screen here is the South American team at the beginning of the game. And the thing that bugged me about having these two different teams is that I was very engrossed in outfitting my European team with Elsa and Zed and the characters and it's like you outfit your guys, you get them all their guns and their backpacks and you're ready for the next battle with all this stuff in your head about how you're going to make changes to your strategy. And all of a sudden the whole map changes and it, it whisks you away from Europe over to South America and then you have to like readapt your mind to your other team. And I didn't like the characters as much in the whole South American thing and that storyline was just, uh, I thought, slightly out of place. And I just can't believe they didn't give you the option to combine the two teams at the end of the game. That just blows my mind, but whatever. You know what else doesn't make sense is the whole concept of giant military robots to begin with. I mean, if they have the technology to actually build these things and have them work, would they really be giving them different weapons to punch with? Yes, not only do you have long-distance missiles, which makes complete sense, but you also have advanced brass knuckles, so you can run up to your enemy and punch them. It just seems like a giant waste of technology relying on a 10-story robot to punch your opponent. At that point, wouldn't it just be easier to summon an airstrike from outer space and incinerate them? 